Hey, sneaky nose back. Yes, it's that time of year again. It's my Linux top 10 alternative distros of the past 12 months, which is the year 2011, 2012. So anyway, at number 10 is Haiku. Yes, Haiku. Now, as you know, Haiku is a bit weird, okay? It's a bit different because it's loosely, I mean, I'm going to say this again. It's loosely, should I say again? Loosely based on B-E-O-S from way back in the day. Now, BOS is like defunct basically in the day, and this is what's come off of it, really. And very, very nice it is to use too. Yes, it's a bit quirky. Yes, it's a bit different. Can it do in almost everything? Yes, almost. It can't do everything, but if you want something a bit different, I would just say, go and download Haiku. It can be installed. It's easy to install. I've done videos on it lots and lots and lots of times before on how to install it. It just runs. I've not had it crash, but I had a few little problems about a year ago with installing applications from the websites. But apart from that, not a lot whatever, so ever. So Haiku is why it's at number 10, because it's super of the duper. Blimey, yeah. Okay. Number nine. And you're going, free NAS? Yeah, number nine is free NAS. Yeah, number nine is free NAS. The reason why it's number nine, because it's at number nine. I've, no, Yes, it's a distro of such. It's for network attached storage. And you're saying, well, it's not a desktop distro. Yeah, but it's still a distro. Based on free BSD. Yeah, free BSD. Super of the duper. I've been playing with it for about a year. I've got my own free BSD, for, sorry, free NAS box, should I say. It just runs and runs and runs and runs and just keeps running. It's just it's so super stable. It is a bit picky with certain hardware, so you can't just dig up any old box you've got in your garage and put it on, because sometimes it just won't play ball, and sometimes you will have to update the BIOS on whatever system you've got, or it just won't run at all, basically. But if you're saying get an all-in-one Atom board, it should, in theory, run super-duper fast. Yeah, old thing that's. At number eight, number eight, oh yeah, is Aptal Sid. Yes, Aptal Sid is at number eight. Right, hot, spicy, and sweet at the same time. Aptosid, Fulker Debian, Debian Sid, was still in development, remember? Still in development, always going to be in development. So you've got some really cutting edge software here for Debian. It's really fast to install, it runs fast, it boots fast. I use it on occasion personally, you know, so it's super fast. And Sneaky Boy uses it as his main distro. And Super Duper is too. Now, this one comes with XFCE, as you can see here, but you can get flavours of KDE for it. Although, in my personal opinion, just stick to XFCE. It'll do it all better and quicker anyway. And you won't need to faff about with Kuda, would you really, Wendy? But yeah, that's Aptosid, number eight, and it's well deserved place, new in this year. Super of the Duper. What more can I say? Not a lot, really. But yeah, it's a Debian one. First of a few, actually. Debian, yeah. First of a few. Anyway, moving on. Da, 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 da. At number seven is Ostromi. And some of you said, I've never heard of it. Well, if you watch my videos regularly, you would have heard of Ostromi. I've been following it for a couple of years. Now, loosely based on Slacks or Slackware, it's a live CD and installable. Although, if you can get it installed first time, I'll give you a sweetie, okay? Because I've had trouble over the years. But as a live CD, if you just want to do anonymous browsing and surfing and office work and save to a USB stick, Ostromi should be the business for you. It just it boots up really, really quick. Yes, I know it's from Latvia. Yes, yes. And I know it doesn't actually use Latvian for its main language. It uses a, a dialect of Latvian that's not really used by many people, apparently, as I've been told. But hey, as I've got changed it to English, no big deal for me, really, is it? But yeah, it really, really runs really, really cool from the live CD. So you don't really, really need to have to install it, really. Anyway, yeah, so that's Ostromi. Number six. And you're saying, yeah, but that's mainstream. Well, it's only just become mainstream. It's only just this year been in the family of the Bantus, isn't it? But Lubuntu 11.10, a lot, lot better than its first outing in 11.04, which is, in my personal opinion, a total failure. 11.10, it's redeemed itself super fast, as usual, as it would be. It's LXDE stroke open box, isn't it, when you think about it? Super stable once you've updated it, okay? It'll look a bit weird when you first install it to your system because it will like, give you some weird messages. But once you've updated the system, it's as fast and smooth as you could really want. And PNXDE, 
it just runs and runs and runs and you can do multiple stuff it'll just use over 100 megabytes of RAM yeah just over 100 so that's even better comes with some crappy games and stuff like that but basically you add what you want on top of that don't you yes you don't want to do anything else no you don't so yeah but yeah Lubuntu 1110 a lot lot better than last year so what more can I say go and give it a go yeah but anyway Lubuntu yeah easy at number 6 what more can I say okay number 5 and you're going Bodhi Linux why is it only at number 5 well certain reasons I like it don't get me wrong Bodhi Linux is lovely jubbly but in my personal opinion, it still needs a bit more work, really. A little bit more work for it to work correctly. But if you want an E17 distro of output E17 on your own Bantu, this is the baby for you. At 400 megabytes download, it's a lot, lot smaller than all the other Bantus, okay? So it's super of the duper. And you get options to run on stuff. Give me due, Jeff has actually got it to run on ARM7 stuff and tablets as well. So you get to the option to put it on a tablet, if you can actually afford one to put it on it. But if you can't, there's no big deal really, is it? But yes, it will run really, really nice on your desktop. What more can I say? Bod high, the tree, bod high, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, bod high. Not tree really, no. But yeah, Bodhi Linux, this is 1.3 you're seeing here. Super fast, super stable, installs in no time at all. Go and give it a go. Oh yes. Okay, number four, a Gen 2. Oh yeah, Sabion 7. The best, yes, I'm saying it again. The best, yes, I'm going to say it again. The best E17 distro of the Gen 2. Oh yeah, only the Gen 2 though. Uh, how'd you go in there, didn't I? This is actually running E17, this Sabion, but LXD runs fine, GNOME runs fine, and so does KDE. It's super fast, super stable. Yes, I know it's pre, a pre-rendered Gen 2, but yeah, if you don't want to sit there for 24 hours waiting for Gen 2 to compile, or the stuff that it needs to, or maybe 48, depending on your stuff, right? Sabion is your best bet, okay? It is your really best bet. Comes with a lot of stuff already with it, so you don't actually need to install lots. And it comes with an entropy store to get all your extra stuff and stuff like that. Yes, installing stuff is a bit slow sometimes, but yeah, hey, what do you want, guys? What do you bleeding want? It's Gen 2 at the end of the day, so it's going to be a little bit slow. Yeah. Anyway, at number three, a little bit of drinkage. At number three, we have Magpup 528. Yes, another Enlightenment E17. Now, why have I put this above all the other E17s? For a simple reason, it's downloads 170 megabyte and installs in three to four minutes. And that's everything you really want it to do. Yes, you can change everything. It comes pre-installed with lots more stuff than some of the others, apart from Sabion, but then Sabion is a rather large download. But compared to Bodhi Linux, it's, Bodhi Linux is three times the size plus, okay? So that's the main reason. Plus it's faster. Don't forget about it. It's a lot, lot faster. It's a lot faster than Sabion, and if you want the E17 experience to the max and make it easier for to use and learn, MacPub is the only one to go to. It's upgraded regularly, so no problem. And being based on 528 at the moment, it's going to be going for quite a long while until John decides to pull it over to the other one, okay? Which is spot. Okay, getting to the big one. At number two, number two is Tiny Core. Yeah, down from last year's number one. Now, Tiny Core has always been one of my favourites, and it's got even better this year with the auto installer and the Core Plus stuff all on top of that. And you can all have different desktops. But the base Tiny Core is still only 10.4 or 10.8 megabytes, and it's super quick to install, super fast to use from the disk, and it's just super fast, really. I mean, you can install almost any application you want to. Yes, you will have some problems with getting some applications, but on top of that, it's easy peasy, really, when you think about it. Oh, really easy peasy. And I need that download. What more can I say? Tiny Core is super of the bleeding of the duper. But it's only number two this year because it's just a few little niggly diggly biggly bits that weren't right. So, anyway, the big number one for this year. Number one. Oh, yeah. Number one is Weary Stroke Racy Puppy 522. Yes, a puppy is number one this year. For the simple reason, it it runs on almost any hardware. Yes, even stuff that Tiny Core won't run on. Puppy Weary and Puppy Racy will run it. Now the reason there's two Weary, basic Weary, is for your really older stuff, and it comes with the older kernel. Whereas Racy, on the other hand, is the newer kernel. So if your hardware is a little bit newer and you want to run it on a new or a new system, even 
it won't have the slow slowdowns that Weary had before. So it's so super fast on any machine. And installation takes about four minutes. It's easy peasy. I just installed it on a Pentium 3 not too long ago. It only took 15 minutes. That's how fast it was. And it's so easy to use. So yeah, that's number one from me this year. It is Weary Stroke Racy 522. Well deserved. Sneaky Linux at. I'll see you later. Bye bye.